Okay, so you should be able to hear me. I should be able to see everything. Um, I'm probably still going to fuss over my lighting and all that other stuff in a second. Because I'm not entirely happy with it, but uh, it might just have to do for today. It might just have to do for today. So yeah, hi, uh, it's Tuesday. Good morning. Um, today's going to be slightly interesting. Because, uh, things happen today. And things, meaning uh, not anything necessarily negative news-wise, it's just... <sighs> Sometimes life happens, right? And I, I will stop futzing with things in a second. I'm just trying to fix things. So, this is what's going on. Um, Dr. Pamela and I... For those of you that don't know, both work from home. And when you work from home, some people, you know, respect the fact that, yes, even though you are home all day, you still have a schedule. And some people are like, well, you're going to be home, so I'll just show up. Right? Right. So Dr. Pamela had roofers scheduled to come tomorrow when I usually do daily space. And instead, they came today. So that's issue number one. Issue number two is uh, there was some sort of user issue on the website or the forums or Bennu. There was something that went wrong this morning and Dr. Pamela fixed it. So she didn't have time to do slides. <laughs> so between the roofers showing up unexpectedly and fixing things, uh, yeah, we quite frankly don't have news ready for you today. So I'm either going to stall or we're just going to wing it. Um, also, also, um, I have a house guest. I don't know if she's going to make an appearance on camera. Now you're going to come over here and look. I have a house guest. Uh, just as I turned on the stream. Come here, baby girl. Just as I turned on the stream... Literally, I hit the, st the start streaming button and there's a knock at the door. I'm like, oh no, what is it? Go look at look through the door. Look through the window. I see that it's my mom. Okay, I can't ignore my mom. Um, hi. I know you think I'm your human. I am not your human. Um, I, I go look through the window, see that it's my mom. I can't ignore my mom. Open up my, open up the door. She's got a dog. She's dropping a dog off. So yeah, yeah, hi. And you still haven't quite figured out all the Cheerios, have you? Do you like Cheerios even? Let's try this on camera. So you do like Cheerios. You just don't want to fight the other two for them. So yeah, I have one extra doggo. They are taking the other doggo with them on whatever they're doing. They're going on some sort of motorcycle trip, but, um, they are, my dad's still healing from his knee surgery back in, oh gosh, months ago. Like, he should have been healed. There's been problems. Oh, look! There's extra bits. Are you going to join everybody for the extra bits? No? No? Okay, I'll just put you down on my lap. I love how almost all the dogs are, like, small enough where they're not going to be on the thing. So, anyways, here's the Cheerios. You see the Cheerios, baby girl? And Tinker, speak. Puck, speak. <laughs> All right, hey, hey, hey. Tinker said thank you. Puck's trying to say thank you. And baby girl's like, what's happening? And make it rain. All right. Do you want down? No, you just, you just want to, you just want to. Okay, it's okay. We can do this. I just put makeup on. You really don't want to lick the makeup dog. 
So, um, thank you for the bits, Wayne. Uh, yeah, I... <laughs> what are you doing, doggo? Oh, look, more bits! Well, they're eating those. You want to eat these? Let's see if I can tilt the camera down so you can see her better. Oh, too far down and, and y'all see my messy house. Anyways, she's eating the, the Cheerios off my desk. Let's see. Yeah, too far down, y'all see my messy house, and I'm trying to avoid y'all seeing my messy house. I need a better green screen. So, but thank you for the bits! No, there's no cat, Rue. I have an extra dog today. I have an extra dog. I don't know where the cat is. Usually the cat is attracted to the sound of the dog's barking because the cat has learned that the dog's barking means that it's time to eat food. Hey, that's coffee. You don't want that. You really don't want that. So yeah, no, it's a dog. Pull up the dog. This is my mom's dog, baby girl, that came from the St. Louis area, originally from Texas. Uh, she was, uh, when hurricanes are coming in, shelters typically that are in the hurricane areas, shelters typically move, uh, evacuate the pets that are currently in the shelters that are unclaimed to literally make room for pets that end up being separated from their humans. So that's what happened. There was a hurricane that was coming. Baby girl was essentially evacuated from Texas and taken to, uh, St. Louis. And when my mom and I were out there a couple years ago for a big planetarium conference called the Pleiades, my mom was already looking for another dog. And uh, we came back with a dog. I was very grouchy about this. And it's about an eight hour drive between St. Louis and, um, it's an eight hour drive between St. Louis and Youngstown, more or less. And I spent that entire eight hour drive with this dog in my lap. So this dog thinks I'm her human. So, and we think that was her first time like in a car as a passenger and she did okay. But then shortly after that, like within weeks, uh, my parents were in a major car accident. Like they're okay, they're okay. Their vehicle that they really liked got totaled and they're still waiting for an insurance settlement. But the dog was traumatized and separated, uh, separated from my parents overnight, but still did okay for my uncle and car rides, with her since then have been very traumatic for everybody involved. And she may actually soon have to be drugged. Like she has to be sitting in your lap and you have to hold her and you have to, you know, reassure her that it's going to be okay. Cause she just freaks out. So anyways, that's the story behind baby girl. Can I put you down on the ground? No, you just want to sit in my lap. All right. So for those of you that just tuned, tuned in, uh, today's a little weird. And, uh, yeah, I am literally stalling. I don't have any news ready for you. I started on my news for tomorrow. Um, I can tell you that there's going to be a rocket launch tomorrow morning that we will be streaming and that SpaceX has put up some photos and things of that nature. What about the moon? I, is there new stuff about the moon? I don't think there's new stuff about the moon. Um, I really don't. I'm, I want to, I'm going to check something. Found unexpected mass in the South Pole. I have not heard of that. I don't know if Dr. Pamela was going to cover that. Um, right now I'm literally just checking to see where my package is. Huh. Why did it end up in... That's curious. That is curious. Um, the moon is part of Mars. So, the moon is part of part Mars is part of a tweet that our president, Donald Trump, put out last week. And actually, let me find you the link for that tweet. Um my package, your package, 
<laughs> your package. Part of me is like, I should just get up and show you the box, Veronica. In fact, we'll do that in a second. So let me find this Twitter, uh, this tweet from the president that everybody's talking about, the moon. Uh, moon Mars. That should pull it up, right? Right? Maybe Moon Mars Trump? Oof. And you just laid down and now, now it's hard. Um. Hey! Hey, Sergacy? Sir? Sir? Jesse? Can I call you Sir? I am really terrible, or if you put out a uh, phonetic pronunciation in, in the chat, I will try my best to uh, pronounce it correctly. Oh my goodness. Why? He, he tweets so much, and now I'm going to have to, like, search. Can I search within somebody's Twitter feed? Um, Moon Mars, real Donald. I'll just put Trump. Um, yeah, there's like a whole bunch of, um, quotes or things making fun of it. And I th think... Um, yeah, no, it's, it's, this whole thing has been hilarious. And I can't find the original tweet. Well, here we go. Here's a, a snapshot of it. For all the money we are spending, NASA should not be talking about going to the moon. We did that 50 years ago. They should be focused on much bigger things we are doing, including Mars, of which the moon is a part, defense and science. So what people, like I've only ever seen that tweet. I admittedly don't follow Donald Trump. Um, people are saying this is taken out of context and Twitter forces you to have very small uh, things. Like, I think it's only 160 characters. Hey, thanks for the follow, uh, Ty Boss. So those of you that, that don't know what happens when, you know, alerts pop up. So here's some Cheerios and make it rain and enjoy some doggy cuteness. Um, he, uh, a lot of people are like, this is out of context. So Twitter, you know, forces you to, to use only so many characters. And so you can't, unless you do a thread, which this may have been part of a thread, uh, you can't process a whole lot of information at once. And even then with a, a thread, you have to be careful with your individual tweets that they make sense as a whole. So yeah, this was probably taken out of context. Um, there's something called, there's a proposed mission essentially that's going to make the moon a like stopping ground. Uh, I can't ever remember the name of the gateway and this is terrible because I'm usually I'm the one out of the two of us that does all the like space missions but um, it's like a gateway essentially and using the moon as a gateway to the Mars so yes in fairness this is taken out of context but when you look at it just like this you're like what's happening and <sighs> they're just wasn't enough characters to fully explain and things were shortened and information was dropped off and yeah but people have been having a lot of fun with it um sir sir surgacy 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 says i don't even know how to do that so by phonetic i mean putting um like how you would spell out your name if somebody was going to pronounce it. So my name is um, Anne E. And 
I'm going to type it out in chat. So uh, for most English speakers, an slash e would be enough for that to be uh, conveyed because an and then e. So literally Annie. Um, in other languages, Annie is phonetically A and I, or it's E and I. Um, but yeah, that's that's what I mean by phonetically. Because I see your name, and I want to put, um, I just want to call you Sir or Serge, because I'm not entirely too sure. How about just E? Because that's an E. <laughs> oh, just Annie? Or, or my grandfather, who once spelled my name on a card, because it was the first year he was doing it after uh, my grandmother passed, he spelled my name A-N-N-Y. And I remember being really, really upset, but now, um, but now I, I kind of miss, I, I wish I hadn't been so upset about it when I was younger. Call you Surge? Perfect. Um, perfect. I really do try to get something close to names that I can pronounce. There's a champion horse named, once named, Patu. At least that's how I'd pronounce it. Uh, yeah, I am terrible at pronunciations, and I admit that, and I really don't want to offend people when I get mispronunciations wrong, so. Potatoes? Oh my goodness! Potatoes! But there's no A. Okay. It's one way to do it. Um... Alright, so... I'm gonna scroll up. So I'm doing all right. Uh, unexpected mass on the South Pole. That is actually pretty cool. <sighs> there is no S. Potato. Spuds. Somebody should just name a horse. There is no S. Or there is no, there is no spoon. I'm sure it's been done. I'm sure it's been done. Okay, I'm glad. Um, I've had exposure to other languages. I s used to speak por Brazilian Portuguese like a baby. And I studied a lot of French, but my French is still terrible. So um, I try, but I'm not the greatest. Also, I can sing a song in Polish. I'm sure it's terrible Polish, but I can sing a song in Polish. Um, hmm. So yeah, um, for those of you that just are Tuning in, uh, Jim Doctor says, Mr. Luxury Yacht pronounced throat warble mangrove. That's that's hilarious. Um, for those of you that are just tuning in, uh, as a reminder, Dr. Pamela and I both work from home. Hello, Larry. And uh, not everybody understands that when you work from home that you can't just crash or, you know, do whatever, whenever, because people actually have schedules. And uh, roofers appeared. Wild roofers appeared today at Dr. Pamela's house. They were not expected to uh, show up until tomorrow when I normally do daily space. But no, no, they showed up today. And between wild roofers randomly appearing and uh, the fact that Dr. Pamela fixed something on the website today. She did not have time to get any slides done. So I was working on my slides for tomorrow and about the only thing I'm even somewhat pre prepared to talk about is the fact that there's a launch tomorrow. So we're stalling slash uh, winging it and I don't know for sure what's going to happen. So um, actually let me pull up Discord and make sure I haven't missed anything. So I don't, I don't, I don't know what's happening. I, I really don't. We might just sit here and chat for an hour or so. We, we could mark uh, Bennu. Um, we could mark Bennu. I feel like we should mark Bennu. 
and I was checking, oh, that's what it was. I was gonna show um, Veronica her package that she's been waiting on for like six months. And I was checking the status of my package and it started off, this package started off in Illinois, went to Nebraska, Wyoming, and Utah. It is going the wrong direction. So, it doesn't even have a scheduled delivery. It was supposed to, it was supposed to have been delivered yesterday, but it, it I guess it got on the wrong, uh, I guess it got on the wrong uh, truck. Which is fair. I don't even remember what kind of shipping I got. I got Legos free shipping, so, I mean, I really can't complain. I really can't complain. All right, so Utah is a hub, probably boarding a plane. Hopefully. Um, yeah, it's in Salt Lake. But up until yesterday, it um, had said that it would, um, up until yesterday it said it would be delivered, and it would be delivered yesterday. Um, and even on FedEx's page is, it was shipped on the 7th, and Standard Transit said it should have been here yesterday, and so yeah, something not quite right happened. But, oh well. Um... What Lego did I get? I got a, or I got the, um, the Apollo 11 Lunar Lander. Let's see if I can pull up the link. It is a hundred dollar Lego set. I got that for my birthday. Because favorite... <laughs> All right, I think they're done now. Um, I got the uh, Apollo 11 Lunar Lander. Yeah, I'm sorry. I try to hit mute as fast as I can. It's, and it is worse with three of them versus two. Hey, Susie, thanks for the sub. Let's get some, you know, Cheerio love going. So here's the Cheerios. And make it rain. Uh, if it's on back order, if you order it and it's on back order, they're usually pretty good about making sure you got it or that you're going to get it. Um, that's happened with a few other Lego things. So, um, Larry says, so no news today. Uh, well, kind of, maybe, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Um, we just talked about my package. I'm going to mute my mic because I don't trust the dogs. And, um, and, um, hold on. Oh, I just got an update. There's a dog under my desk, but I got an update. So Pamela says, I will have slides with full script to you in a couple minutes on the last slide with people stomping around the house. So yes, we will have news. Uh, we're just gonna, we're just gonna keep stalling. Um, besides, I usually start 10 minutes after the hour anyway. Um... So I'm going to get up and I'm going to mute my mic because I don't trust my dogs. And I'm going to show you all what's in Veronica's package because poor Veronica has been waiting for this package for a while. So I will be right back.
Okay, so first I need to make sure that, you know, I don't accidentally dox Veronica. So this is Veronica's box, and I already do have her uh, shipping label printed out. And uh, it's going to be shipped in an old Loot Crate lab. And so here's what the inside of the Loot Crate. Oh no, it's getting green screened out. So it's it's a, um, it says Loot Crate Lab, another handy career building kit from Loot Crate. Exciting science, atomically correct, safe and surreal. I'm not sure what game this came from. And there is a t-shirt in here. The Rick and Morty t-shirt, which green screened out. And there is a coaster and, and into the black, uh, kind of almost looks like a bumper sticker, a planet that Dr. Pamela painted, a tiny one. This one doesn't have her name or date on the back of it, so I think, I think this got put in a box and we forgot to do that. Um, a NASA pencil. Yeah, planet. See, I'm making it worth your. I'm making it worth the wait. Some um, tiny Cosmo Quest stickers. These little things, which I don't know what they are, but um, it just has the website and uh, just a little bit. I figured you could use these to inflict science on people. There's like four or five of them in here. Um, a lanyard. These are nice lanyards, by the way. I have several of them. Oh, and I attached a button to the lanyard. It's a little 365 days of astronomy sponsor button. Let's see if I can kind of... My webcam doesn't autofocus, so... Uh, planet looked like Jesus in the green screen. And... Um, a don't feed the trolls, don't be a troll bracelet, which surprisingly is not getting green screened out. I was not kidding when I said I went through Dr. Pamela's attic. She's got a lot of stuff up there. And uh, an explore your unif universe big sticker. And that's the uh, telescope looking at the moon. And then this is like the daily space. Well, I think of this as the daily space logo. Um, a rocket with the moon. So yeah, that's all that's in your box right now. I have stick to the Astro Books at the store. Let's see, I have things in my purse. Let me dig out my purse. Also my purse, which most of you can't see it. I love this purse. Um, it's gray, it has circles and the circles are uh, pie all the way out. So yeah, all the swag, hold on, there's more stuff in my purse. I just have to dig it out. So this is, at YSU we have a, um, we have a 3D printing lab and so on and so forth. Something in the chat. Slides done, popping in chat, cool. Um, we have a 3D printing lab and they also have things that they can do laser cutting with. So this is a, um, kind of a keychain. I know it's hard to see. <coughs> it says, uh, Ward Beecher Planetarium. And it has uh, the Ward Beecher Planetarium's logo, which is a penguin looking at the stars. And it's kind of on um, Saturn, and it's a neat little thingy. So, yeah. So I'll go ahead and put that in there before I forget it. And I know I have other stuff in the box on campus for you. So, yeah, Veronica, you're getting a whole lot of extra stuff um, that a lot of people didn't get simply because, uh, <laughs> simply because you know, your box is... is you know, came home. So in addition to this, uh, what Veronica originally won at the um, Hangout-a-thon was Ward Beecher Planetarium mug. And then because I hadn't shipped that out, we just combined the stuff from the Ward Beecher Planetarium mug, the Hangout-a-thon, and the uh, Celebration stream. 
So yeah, there's a lot of stuff in your box. Um, I just have to go to campus and get the rest of it. And then I can get it out in the mail and you can be, you know, overwhelmed in person. So I really do apologize that it's taken out. Um, why does the Ward Beecher Planetarium show have Ward Beecher Planetarium have a show called Cuddles, Hugs, and Kisses? That's a very good question. I don't work directly with the planetarium a whole lot anymore. I still maintain an office there, which I haven't been to in over a month. Um, I don't know. <laughs> um, I honestly don't know. Now I'm going to have to Google that. I still do distribution for Cosmic Castaways and a few other things, so yeah. All right, so Pamela's here, which means slides are done. And uh, let me just, come on. Oh, I guess it's, it's Google Drive, I don't have to refresh. So again, thank you for all of your patience. I really do appreciate it. I know today has been weird. Uh, no, I don't actually wanna kill all those tabs. I just want fewer tabs. Um, now I just have to find the right ones. And then it's today. No, today's the 11th. So here. And presenter view. So just I'm just rearranging a few things. to get everything ready and we'll kill the music in a second and then we'll run the roll the pre-roll and then we'll do the thing we'll do the thing everybody um okay let me make sure everything's ready because yeah see see if i would have went it would have not have been ready oh where is it that was really loud, phone. That's not what I wanted you to do. Come on, you can do it. There we go, awesome. Um, you know, obviously I need to silence my phone. That looks like everything's ready. There are a whole lot of windows here, people. So, um, I have full slides. Oh no, it just, it just hasn't been mailed, Veronica. It really hasn't been mailed and I will let you know when it's mailed and I will probably make sure there's a tracking number so you can watch it because you have been waiting long enough. Um, the dog is trying to stare down the stream. He is a little off center. That is Tinkerbell and she's a little off center. Tinker doesn't know where to stand. Um, and I have extra things between me and the, uh, the dog yo cam. Okay, so this is all the Cheerios I have left in my container. So we're gonna go ahead and dump these. Don't make it rain on the dogs. And after the news, I will refill the Cheerio box because I know some of you get it, you know, get some joy out of watching me do that. And I am going to, where's the thing? All right. So there goes the music and I'm going to run the pre-roll and we're going to get right at this as soon as I find it. And yeah, we're gonna do the news and all the things. What happened with the nice make it rain? There's a lot of Cheerio dust on the floor. Um, there is a lot, wow. I might actually have to mop. Uh, dump. I, I will make it rain later to make up for that. All right, so I'm gonna run the pre-roll. And then after that, we'll get all right at the news. So again, thanks for your patience. Let's do this.
Hello. Hello, or hello. Uh, welcome to Daily Space. I am your host, Annie Wilson, and today is June 11th, 2019. There was a little bit of craziness, so I'm hosting both today and tomorrow, I think. I don't know. We'll figure that out later. And I have some news stories for you. And then after the news stories, we'll chat. And there's also a launch tomorrow morning before the news. So we'll chat a little bit about that after. And uh, as a reminder, you can go ahead and ask me questions, please, at me. That's, you know, at CosmoQuest in the chat so I can see your questions easier. And Dr. Pamela is in chat with us today. So feel free to at her with questions too. So that's at CosmoQuestX and at Starstrider. And if one of us can't answer your question, the community as a whole can because everybody is freaking awesome and we make a wonderful, wonderful, huge exo brain for each other. So with that, let's get on to the news because everybody's here and everything's ready. All right, so first up, I have this lovely picture of the moon for you. And, and, um, yeah, this is totally an interesting picture of the moon. It kind of looks like a crater and a mass. I don't know. I have text. I'll read the text. One screen, it looks like one thing and the other screen, it looks like something else. So perspective. All right. So like something out of the movie, Close Encounters of the Third, ca third Kind, Ahuna Mons rises oddly from the surface of the asteroid series. This was not the moon. I'm sorry. I thought this was the moon. Look at me messing up. So, correction, this is not the moon. This is a picture of Ceres. <sighs> I'm thinking of the moon because we were ta talking about uh, how there was a mass found on the moon earlier. And I was like, oh, cool. I have a story about that. All right, so correction. This is from the asteroid series, and Ahuna Mons rises oddly from its surface, first spotted as an oddly shiny spot in the floor of a great basin. This 4,000 meter tall, that's four kilometer meter tall mountain is like nothing else in our solar system. And wow, wow, look at this. Look at this. The most striking are these weird sheer sides that are covered in shiny deposits that appear to be salts. These deposits indicate what we're looking at is an ice volcano that has erupted salt water ice. What? Really? That's a, wow. That's a thing? Holy crap. That's freaking awesome. All right. So how does a giant asteroid the OG former planet, real stuff, Ceres was a planet before Pluto was a planet, have ice or cryovolcanoes. This is wild. This is wild. Okay, so new research coming out from the German Aerospace Center, which is Delta Lima Romeo in German, thinks it has an explanation. Using the orbiting Dawn spacecraft as a test particle in the gravity field of Ceres, they mapped out the differences in the gravitational pull from point to point around Ceres. Oh, wow. These differences map out the places that where... Mm, hold on. I'm trying to work through the sentence. These differences map out places... Uh, there are more, or where there's more or less material between the spacecraft and Ceres' center of mass. Um, in this image, Ahuna Mons is shown in white, and the red and yellow around it is a gravitational anomaly where the excess, where there is excess material above the green average. Okay, so this image we have a. Um, Two images side by side. On the left is Ceres. It's just in grayscale, kind of like what we're used to seeing from a lot of astronomical images. And on the right, they've superimposed data from <clears throat> Dawn uh, spacecraft. 
where they were getting uh, mm, more or less material between Ceres and the center of mass. So white, which over here, white, this is where Ahuna Mons is, and this is the same place on the left. And then you have all of this red and yellow and the green over here on the very edges is the, you know, actual average. And they have all of these weird anomalies. So, wow. Um, yeah. So the team in Germany theorizes, and here is a quote from the press release, a bubble made of a mixture of salt water, mud, and rock rose from within the dwarf planet. The bubble pushed the ice-rich crust upwards, and at a structural weak point, the muddy substance compromising, comprising salts and hyd mm, I hate this word hydrogenated silicates, hydrogenated silicates was pushed to the surface, solidified in the cold of space in the absence of any atmosphere, and piled up to form a mountain. Ahuna Mons is an enormous mud volcano. I'll repeat that. Ahuna Mons is an enormous mud volcano. Um, so yeah, we were wrong when we called it an icy or cryo volcano. Yeah, sure, there's salt water in its eruptions. This is what makes the dirt into mud. This is a mud volcano. This is wild. Whew. All right, so Ceres is proving itself once again far more complex than we ever imagined an asteroid could be. Like Pluto, this former planet that was demoted more than 70 years before Pluto was even found is giving us the kind of science that argues that calling it a dwarf planet maybe isn't enough. And just, yeah. And uh, if you, like us, our team series, we've got a shirt for that. And you can find that shirt on our Redbubble store. So that looks like the end of our news slides because, you know, it happens. And yeah, so now let's talk about this. And hopefully Dr. Pamela uh, can give us more things and tell me how much I messed that up because I feel like I messed that up. In the meantime, I'm going to bring up more dogs and... Um, fill up the uh, Cheerios and move Veronica's box so it doesn't get covered in Cheerio dust. Okay, so, um, yeah, now's a good time to ask questions. I know it wasn't a whole lot today, but you know, life happens. Life happens. And yeah, dwarf planets are freaking awesome. They really are. All the dogs are like, I hear the Cheerio bag. Uh, oh, she lost the feed. Internets are wibbly wobbly today. Well, I was seeing, I was asking you, uh, I was asking you how much I messed up, but I, I think, I think I powered through and I think I understand it and I think everybody else understands it because usually the key to, for me to get everybody else to understand it is, uh, is for me to understand it. So, did you get the wibbly wobbly from, from Annie? She had it on Sunday. I sure did. They should make an asteroid out of Cheerio dust. Don't tempt me. Don't tempt me. Anyways, I know the doggo cam is a little wonky. It looks sideways to me. Let's see if I can fix this. Oh, I need to clear this off. We'll just, we'll just do that. Um, as long as they're not timey-wimey. All right, so we had a follow or a sub or something super early while I was starting the news. So anyways, I forget, and I'll probably, you know, scroll up and do this again. But for that, and for the just unceremonial dump of Cheerios, here's the Cheerios. Hey, Puck, speak. <laughs> Tinker says thank you. Puck apparently has given up on saying thank you. I say thank you. Here's the Cheerios, and make it rain. All right. So the big fluffy dog you see is Puck. And then there is a small dash hound, black and tan dash hound that may pop on camera. And apparently my house guest is just going to lay on the back of the couch and just observe. So I'm gonna scroll up 
while I scroll up, uh, this is your reminder that this is a production of PSI. Um, working in conjunction or collaboration with Youngstown State University. And PSI is a 501c3 nonprofit, which is just a fancy way of saying that where laws allow, donations are tax deductible. So, um, let me see if there's any news. So DPI asked, why does Ward Beecher Planetarium, which is associated with, you know, Youngstown State University, have a show named Cuddles, Hugs, and Kisses. I I don't know. Part of me is like, are you trolling me? Is this a real thing? Let's look at this now. Ward Beecher Planetarium. I almost feel like this is a troll. Um, visit, productions, educational shows. I don't, I don't even see where you would have gotten that. I feel like that would have been elementary pre-K. What is it? Hugs? What was it? Cuddles, hugs, and kisses? What? I feel, I feel like you're, I feel like you're trolling me. Yeah, I, f I totally feel like you're trolling me. All right. Because I'm not seeing this. Um, I'm not seeing it. All right. I, that's just weird. Okay, then. Um, shh. Oh, okay. Hey, hey, hey. Are you done? Are you done mocking me for believing that? Um... Apparently, the, why the roofers are there is that there's hail damage. That's terrifying. Um, that's Siri. Ref Smack catches me on my lunar thing. That's Siri's, and there's an Indian and an Audi. All right. So, um, erupted ice water is indefinitely weird. I get those in s containers of soup I leave in the freezer for a year. Ice volcanoes? Ah, <sighs> okay. Um, there is a Hanny's asked. There is a guest animal. Yes, my mom, literally, as I um, it's under field trips. Okay, my mom, literally, as uh, as I was, I clicked start stream and then um, my mom was like, oh. Here we go. I'm just gonna drop off the so hugs. I'm not seeing that. I'm not seeing I'm I'm on field trip. I'm on the field trip page and I don't field trip calendar maybe. I see the weather, first and furthest, undiscovered worlds. Alright, um Yes, the calendar. Oh, you want to know what that is? Cuddles, Hugs, and Kisses is a probably a name of a uh, daycare. So it's not a show. It's just the... And everything fell. It's not a show. It is... Um, it's just a name of a daycare. It's a name of a group. So no, it's not a show. Okay. I was like, that doesn't sound right. But it does sound right if it is a daycare. So... Yeah, um, I'm gonna scroll back up again because I feel like I missed something. Um, so Veronica asks, what time is the launch scheduled for tomorrow? It is scheduled for, let me pull it back up. It is scheduled for 1417 UTC, that is 1017 AM Eastern time, which means I will be on, um, I will be on no later than 1300 UTC, so that's around 9 a.m. 
So uh, Hanny says, the dog looks like one of those things you put next to the door to keep the cold out. Yeah, I, you know how I've tried to keep a dog bed there and that's mostly to keep him from being laying on the floor, but he apparently prefers to lay on the floor. So I've given up on the dog bed. And yeah, that's, that's where he likes to lay. And yes, that is actually kind of a drafty spot. And no, I don't know why he likes to lay against the door, especially in the summertime. But I'm, I'm okay then. Um, open cage says insulation. No, there's these uh, like draft dodger thingies that you put at the bottom of drafty doors to kind of block uh, cold air from entering a room. Um, you can make one using fabric, you can buy them. Uh, some of them slide on to either side of the door and you can leave it in place as you open and close the door. Or, you know, you can just make a really long kind of tube and fill it with like rice or beans or something um, to just kind of block the, uh, yeah, there we go. It's a draft stopper. Yep, that's exactly what it is. So yeah, um, the launch is indeed tomorrow at... Um, 1017 Eastern Time, that's 717 West Coast. This is a West Coast launch, so this may be really early for some of you. This might be in a good time of day for you. I am supposed to have a small to medium sized human tomorrow. So yeah, I don't know how that's going to work out, but it sounds like, um, it sounds like we might do this launch and depending on how long it takes we might roll into daily space there might be a break in between we might do rock marking yes flame lord is going to be is is had asked to visit tomorrow and he asked if he could stream but i don't know what time he's coming over but flame lord said he wanted he wanted to come over tomorrow so we'll see how that goes um Flame Lord only visits us for six weeks and they break that up in the three week period. So that's why you only see him in like short spurts and then he's just not around other than that. So yeah, um, Flame, we might have a guest tomorrow, Flame Lord, and that should be fun because I actually don't know if he's ever seen a rocket launch. So I'm gonna have to talk to uh, my sister about that. Make him a space lord and let him stream daily space. Oh my, oh my. Oh my, I don't know if I'm ready for that. Um, Haney says, that is an impressive name. Is he a fire elemental? I have no idea where he got that name. <laughs> I have no idea where he got that name. Um, that's that's how he has chosen to, uh, to self-identify and that's how we shall uh, identify him on stream is Flame Lord. <laughs> so he he's fun, he's fun. Um, and he can, he can proudly tell you how many toilets are in space. My sister is only a tiny bit annoyed at me for that. Um, so yeah, that's all the news I had for you today. It doesn't look like there's a whole lot of questions. Um, thank you for your patience. Again, I really do. Uh, a good Padawan he is. Hmm? Hmm? Kinda. Kinda. Flame Lord is also my favorite troll, so he likes to troll me. He's getting better, but he likes to troll me. So I don't know if he's a good little Padawan, but I, I do have to check with my sister to see what time he's going to be over tomorrow because maybe he'll just show up after the stream. I don't know. I don't know. Just like an old school, go outside. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. He's, he's fun. So yeah, that's pretty much all I have for y'all today. Um, mm, there might be a rock marking stream later. I want to finish. So he's actually flame. I can't even quite read that. So a uh, flame peasant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, flame peasant. He might actually be upset about that one. <laughs> um, there might be a rock marking stream later today. I want to finish my slides for tomorrow first and figure out what's going on. And um, favorite human has to open tomorrow. So yeah, if we do a stream, it's probably not going to be super late. It'll probably be earlier in the evening. So I don't know. We'll find out. We'll find out. We'll find out. And 
And yeah, um, so does anybody have a suggestion of who to raid while I, you know, get ready to awkwardly roll the credits? Um, ooh, Rue says, I posted another interesting article. Oh, more bits! Oh, thank you! Veronica says, thank you for the preview of the package. You are very welcome. You have been waiting for that for very long. I feel like, yeah, you deserve to see what's taking so long. Um, so here's some Cheerios and Puck Speak. Uh, uh, uh. <coughs> all right, all right, all right. Tinker says thank you. Puck tried to say thank you. The dog on the back of the couch is still unimpressed. Here's the Cheerios and make it rain. All right, so I'm not seeing any uh, suggestions of who to raid. So I want to check Brain Bites to see who's who's live. Serpent AI is live. Um, now I'm checking the Fellowship Discord, of which we are a member of. Um, in Doubt, Raid Snick. Planetary Pan is live. Uh, Adam was live. I don't know if he still is. Uh, Demon Machine is on. Do we want to raid Demon Machine? Or do we want to raid Snick? Um, Serpent AI was on the Cosmo Quest team for a little while. So, um, yeah, there's that. Demon Machine is always on. He streams so much. And he's like, I, I have to give him credit for that. Um, if in doubt, read Snick. Okay, then. So, not really getting anything other than that. So, we're going to read Serpent AI then. Planetary Pan. Uh, wait, is she live? I don't... No, um, Demon Machine is... works on cars. Um. Alright, so we're gonna raid Serpent AI then. Y'all confuse me. Uh, we're gonna raid Serpent AI, who is streaming science and technology. Uh, not entirely too too sure what he's working on right now, but he has he, in the past he uh, has been part of the Cosmo Quest team. So yeah, there's that connection. Um, okay, I was going with the group. It's okay. It's all right. All right, so uh, I'm gonna run the credits, and then we are going to give we're gonna raid and give him a very warm, you know, light up his chat, all those other things. Um, as a reminder, we are brought to you by you, so thank you to everybody for all of your support, uh, financial or otherwise, and if you can't afford to donate or contribute financially, tell a friend about us. You know, spread the word. That actually helps us out a whole lot more, because then we get new friends, and new friends means we have new faces in chat, and new faces in chat means we have a larger community, and larger community means we are inflicting more science upon the world. So let's inflict more science upon the world together. Um, if you want to hang out with us outside of the stream, we have a Discord server. Go ahead. That's free, too. You can join up and hang out there. Uh, if you miss a video and you miss the video on demand we archive everything on youtube and uh i think that's all of the important bits again as a reminder launch is 14 17 utc tomorrow i will be on no later than 1300 hours utc so for me that's 9 a.m oh my what am i doing to myself for me that's 9 a.m um for West Coast at 6 a.m. And I know it's early, but you know, launch! And have a wonderful insert time of day here, and I will see you all tomorrow. Thank you again for everything. We couldn't do this without you, and yeah. Bye.